Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Aussie Techheads, episode 588. It's uh, recorded on the 14th of June, 2018. How are you guys going? Brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. If you need some web hosting, jump onto the athwebhosting.com.au site and get some. Easy peasy. Drag and drop website builder, free for the professional business plans, and all uh, servers are SSD drives. I get SSLs on domains as well. All right, good stuff. Don't forget you can listen to us and other Aussie tech shows on the Aussie Tech Radio. Just grab it on your TuneIn Radio app and search for Aussie Tech Radio. Get us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. And the show notes is or are at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. All right. Other shows to look out for is the My Tech Opinion, the Aussie Tech Crypto and the Aussie Max Zone. And uh, we will start by welcoming the two other guys on the panel tonight. It's a panel these days. Uh, let's. Oh, Joe, how you going? Joe's back from up on high. How you going, Joe? Yeah, good, thank you. That's good, good stuff. We'll we'll talk to you in a minute about uh, your Wi-Fi experiences. And Jordan, how you going? I'm good, mate. Good, good. <laughs> I'll be I'll be better when uh, we can listen back to the show and think it sounded right. Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, yeah. Look, we've got a uh, we've got There's the audio show going on. Someone's playing their Facebook. Yeah, that's not me. So <laughs> I'm off. So uh, yeah, look, if it gets any worse, we'll uh, we'll stop and figure that out. But uh, yeah, look, last week's show I wasn't here. As you know, my internet went down. And apologies if uh, anyone got downloaded the show. There was a bit of an audio mess up for some reason. Not too sure what happened with that. But uh, yeah, the audio overlapped and underlapped and went round in circles. So apologies for that. I did pull the show uh, off the feed. So if you're looking for episode 587, it is no more. So if you've got it, yeah, hang on to it <laughs> if you want. <laughs> or oh, I bet you most of you have deleted it. But anyway, not to worry. Uh, it is uh, hopefully this week will be a lot better. All right. So let's go and find out. Why I, I still can't hear that thing coming back at me, but anyway, I don't know why I would be. There's nothing else on around here. But uh, Joe, what what are you been? You was on holidays. You was up in the air, uh, emailing me, sending me speed tests and whatnot. Yeah, that's right. Um, was flying the the uh, Qantas up in the air, uh, seventy yeah. seven thousand feet up in the air. And where did you do that speed test from? Like what sort of uh, height was that coming into land? Was that Full on no, that was up above the clouds, thirty-seven thousand feet up in the air. Geez, that's pretty good. I, I forget what, what was this. What was the speed you were getting? Can you remember? I forget what it was. I know I put it on Facebook. Oh, geez, I can't remember now. I think it was thirteen point five download and almost one meg up. Yeah, it was. Oh, you're pretty close. It was uh, thirteen point two down and point four four up. <laughs> latency was point four four. I mean, latency was thirty three. And do you know where you took that? Because you was connected to the Sydney server to get that speed. Yeah, look, I, I can't can't recall where I was where I, when I took that. Um, but that's still pretty good. But do you think there was a lot of other people on the plane using it? I know it's a uh, hard there was question. A few, there was a few people there that had their laptops going. Some had their tablets going. I saw mm. some people on phones. Right. Uh, yeah, but but it was it was pretty good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, so that's Qantas. I wonder. Well, so they must get it from the satellite, I guess. Do they? They they must do. It's not going to be beamed up from the planet. I don't think. I, yeah. I don't know how that works. I, I have to sort of go out and find out. You know wh- wh- how that works. Whether they're using some sort of satellite system or whether they. I guess they've got to be. Mm. Yeah, they must be. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's good. That's that's great. Good to see that uh, some technology being performed up in the skies is that they, they might be the the mile high club for for tech heads doing a speed test <laughs> well it's it's funny you say that the mile high club the people who are in business class actually have a, a slightly better internet access oh do they now uh, I, think, I think they can actually stream movies from there um where i was having difficulty streaming movies uh up in the sky but i had everything else like the facebook and the the, the whatsapp and everything else was fine Right, yeah, oh, good. That sounds pretty good. Uh, look, my, uh, I mean, I'm going to say that. Uh, look, we've listened to everyone's critique from the last episode, and Joe, he's already, he's also gone out and bought a new microphone. So that's sound, it's sounding great, Joe. What have you got? Yes, yeah, so guys, tell me, tell me if it, you know, any feedback and if it's any better than the other one or not. Oh, um, I'll tell you I now, it's much better. I've got one of these Audio Technica models. Yeah, I think that's what mine is. So that's good. That's what mine is. Uh, yeah, so... um. Make much judgment tonight. 
<laughs> we might have to pull another show at the rate we're going. No, I don't know where that little bit of feedback's coming from. So I hope you guys can't hear that in the in the recording. You haven't got yours on, Joe, have you? No, not as far as I can see. I mean, I've, the only thing I've got open is my own Facebook page. Um, playing videos. My own groups, Facebook page, and that's it. I don't have any others. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's only tiny, but we'll push on. So hopefully, uh, yeah, it's only teeny tiny little noise. I don't know what it, where it would be. I can't see it coming anywhere from in here. But would it by, by any chance would it come back from feedback from my speakers that I'm listening to you guys from? Oh, that could yep. be it. Yes. That's it. Yeah. You need to have headphones on, mate. Oh, really? I don't want to wear headphones. Can you? What about turn the speaker down a bit? I can do that. Give me a sec. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It's coming back through there. So, Jordan, what's been going on with you? Not a great deal. Um I must admit, I'm really sorry for those people out there listening. I'm a bit worried that Facebook is, is completely out of sync. It's going to kind of be, uh, I've been trying to monitor it as we go, but I've been good. I've been been uh, playing with a lot of virtual um, desktop applications like TeamViewer and VNC and stuff, as you know. And Oh, yes, yes. Just yeah. hanging out to get things sorted and then it's all just falling apart again. <laughs> now, look, someone, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I don't know, I can't remember your name. I'll find out. You talk about the TeamViewer thing you were talking about last week. Uh, you must have been talking about something to do with TeamViewer. Yeah, we were. Uh, me and Will were having a bit of a bit of a chat about remote desktoping and I've been kicked off TeamViewer. I think I may have asked you or told you the other week how I was quite surprised that I hadn't been kicked off when everyone else I knew had been, but I think there's been some, um, some new, uh, licensing stuff that's been put in place for team viewer now. I'm right. not sure what it is, but it's a certain amount of hours per month or something like that. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, we got a question from John. He, he couldn't quite make it through last week's episode. So he wanted us to talk about it again, but yeah, look, you're right. So thanks John for the email. We will have a bit of a chat cause I'd be interested to know as well. Cause I wasn't here last week, but, uh, yeah, TeamViewer, yeah, I'm on the sort of semi-banned list uh, where you log in and you get like five minutes because it suspects commercial use. And then I think I went a step further and now I think I'm only getting about one minute before it boots me off. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, that's I've, the problem I had. Yeah, so I've gone to different methods because, look, to buy the TeamViewer, I think it's about 500 bucks a year, which is quite <laughs> expensive. And uh, so, um, bum, bum. and uh, yeah, so I went with a thing called Splashtop, which probably cost me about uh 300 a year it's not as good as team viewer but it i'll make do with it but jordan what was the story about team viewer last week well it all it, it all started with me trying to do this facebook live thing thinking to myself i've obligated myself to get us live every week on facebook i'm going to have to get some remote desktoping happening so glenn can log in and start the <laughs> and start the feed for us so that it doesn't come down to me every week um because I think everybody's probably getting sick of me being here by now. We need to rotate a few hosts around. I know, Jordan, um, I've been here for 12 years. I, <laughs> they're all right. Don't worry. <laughs> it's all good. So um, so I've just been trying to find something. And being on um, that I've had a, the, the uh, OBS running on Linux, I haven't been able to find anything that'll work with security. Hmm. So I've kind of been w- with encryption um, because TeamViewer and all those things work with encryption on, on Linux. But... Some of the other ones work with encryption, but not without a lot of work because I don't think Linux supports the uh, remote desktopping encryption sort of as well as maybe Windows does. Um, so I've just tried to do anything I can. So that's where it started. So I've tried out a few different applications to replace TeamViewer. I tried um, Remote Utilities, which is a great one for Windows. I've, I really kind of like it. Um, yep. it. It allows 10, I think, 10 connections right. in your address book. Yep. Um, before it'll kick you off so it doesn't it doesn't go on minutes it just goes in connections so and i believe you can reload your address book so once you've got 10 in that address book you, it's just an xml file so you can probably just close it and reopen another one so you might have one business that you've got with that xml file for one business and all their computers and another xml file for another business and all their computers just kind of keep it to a 10 limit on each one and you probably never have to pay for it but that doesn't work with mac desktop it only works with ios and Android phones and Windows desktops. So it's a bit, a bit of a letdown. But then I tried the, the VNC stuff, and that's when I got you on to get the, the, um, the free real VNC viewer tonight because mm. I've got a VNC 
I've got Ultra VNC, I think it is, hosting on that. Or no, the built in VNC viewer on Linux. So it's all over the place. But you're using Splashtop, aren't you? Yes, yes. So I, I've used, I've been using Splashtop. It's not too bad. I think you get like uh, for the 300, you get 10 uh, computers you can uh, remote any time. So okay. once you With use no that time limit. Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's right. Once you use those 10, it, uh, uh, well, you can't use any more. It all has to be like on the run sort of thing. So you get yeah. your, your client to download the, the program. They quickly just run it, brings you up an access number. They give that number to you. You punch it into your server site, side of things, and then it'll yeah. just bring up their window. Mm. And uh, okay. but look, I've been using. Sometimes you know, clients they can't handle it, and they but for some reason they've got Team Viewer on their machine, and they can handle Team Viewer. So even though I've only got a minute or five minutes or whatever it is, I can. I, what I do is I I, I use uh, Team Viewer as you know, just I just abuse it. So I just log in with it. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do my thing. I'll open up my splash top on their computer, get the number, write it down, log in back in through splash top, and then close their Team Viewer before it kicks me off. So there's ways around all that. So if you if you have to, but yeah, five hundred a year is a bit much. Uh, yeah, that so, other one. That, have a look at remote utilities. It's really great. Yeah. Okay. Does that work with uh, the VNC or is that something different? A VNC is a different kind of thing altogether. Yeah. Um, VNC has multiple different versions. There's type VNC. There's real VNC. Ultra VNC. All different people that have it. Some paid. Some free. Ultra VNC is free. You can also create your own custom white labeled um, quick access type exe thing that you can send to your users and they can run it and automatically connects to your server and you can have your own little um, interim server in between. That's right. Sort of, you know, you don't have to rely on anybody to, to, to do that in the middle. So I'm just, I think you don't need team viewer for that in the middle. So I'm just looking at these uh, remote utilities here, see what we, we're up for if we're going to buy it. Number of text one for the starter pack. Ninety nine dollars is that a year? I guess that's no, that's right. That's yeah, that's right. That's for the tech, not for the amount of connections. So if you're 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 the only tech that's going to use your your application. Yes, right. So then yeah. uh, whatever the mini gives you, that's the starter pack. What's the mini give you? That's two forty nine, and the pro is four ninety nine. So it sort of goes up. But it all goes on. It all goes on um, how many entries you can have in your address book. So for the free, the free vision, the free version of it mm. is ten. Right, right. So you can have ten entries in your address book before you have to start paying for it. Right. Yeah. Well, John also was saying that uh, other than the remote desktop function of Team Viewer, he also found the VPN function very handy when remotely oh, grabbing yes. uh, some licenses from his work to home. Uh, yeah, he they they should blow up Team Viewer people for <laughs> they should too. Some bloody Team Viewer, someone should yeah, blow well, them up. You know, how expensive <laughs> do you think it really has to get? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, exactly. Even, even Zoom, uh, Zoom has um. Well, it's a got a kind of remote desktop. I don't know if it has. Oh, it's um, a share screen, I think, but I don't know if it's. it's a, I don't think it's got a. I think I saw in the settings in Zoom it had a allow remote control, but oh, I okay. Never, Look, it, it possibly does, but I think like I think like the Zoom can get up to uh, fifty to a hundred bucks a month, something like that. I think when we didn't we look in was it us that looked into it last week because we wanted to do something in Zoom? live. We want to yeah, stream live from that's here. Right. And they want to charge us big bucks for a it was fifty bucks a month non profit a non profit shows that doesn't have the money to pay for it. Mm, yeah. The other look, the other remote desktop I was going to tell you that's compatible across all all the operating systems is Chrome, Chrome remote desktop. Yeah, my only my only problem with that was for quick access and that is that you've got to ask the other person to be, make sure they're signed into their browser, their Chrome browser, with yeah. their Chrome email before they can run it. So quick access is a bit of a pain. I also thought it would have been great to give you remote access to this OBS machine that I've got, but to do that, I have to sign in with my my uh, Google account to give you remote access, or you have to sign in with yours and then leave it on. So if anybody else turns around and uses the computer. You've got to sign you out of your your Chrome account before it'll work. It's right, just, right. It's just a bit of a stuff around having to, to switch in and out of Chrome accounts. Yeah. So I think the I idea of Team Viewer was to have that quick access. That, yeah, without and it, any having to log in anyway. You know. Yeah, and if you're going to be remoting into someone to help them, you know, uh, change the desktop, uh, I think that yeah, doing the Chrome way could be a bit out of touch, out of yeah. reach for them. And if you've got multiple people that want to log in. 
to that. Yeah. To that but I, I have I have used that Chrome across uh to, like to do it onto a Mac, so it does work. But it's, it's yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, no. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, buzz into some stories then and see what we got going. I was gonna. Oh look, I, I pulled my first story. I pulled out was a Kogan story. I didn't really want to put them up front. <laughs> Because I'm not sure if I'm going to buy anything else from these guys. But uh, <laughs> because I still haven't got my phone. It's coming tomorrow. Uh, for those that's of you who don't, don't know, it is. Well, that's what Australia Post says. So for those of you who don't know, I did buy an Android phone from Kogan. I got it before the week was up. I, I realized it wasn't working properly, so I sent it back. And then I just haven't had one since. So it had to be two weeks for them to to think about it. And so on the 14th day, the 14th day, the last day, they're two weeks, they said, yeah, right, here's another one, we'll send you another one. So anyway, so then that's another week for it because it, by the time they send it, by the time it comes, like they sent this, I got the notification this was going to happen last Thursday. So by the time it comes tomorrow, Friday, it'll be a week and a day. So look, I'm pretty much, next time I buy something from I'm going to say, is this item in Australia? Because I, you know. I'm impatient. Like everyone, you buy something, you want to use it, all right? But anyway, Kogan's latest business venture is into smart devices. The Kogan Smart Home Range will start with the two smart heaters, and they're priced at $99 and $129. They said it would expand into smart home range throughout the year, and that is to include smart lights, plugs, portable conditioners, and other connected devices. Kogan Smart Devices can all be controlled through the company's free Smarter Home app available for iOS. So let's have a look. Can't wait to see how all that's going to work and sync together. My God. Last week, Kogan announced it would start selling white goods. Oh, my God. I would never do that. And kitchen appliances from its website. I know someone else that bought a TV and they had to send it back. Just washed out picture. Just no good. Just, just rubbish. Rubbish. So I think if you can get a brand name through them and it's at a good price, probably okay. But, uh, yeah, Kogan washing machine. Would you go through the... The trouble, like if you're going to buy a washing machine, you need a washing machine. If you know what I mean, like you, you're like your one's broken, so you need another one. You don't go out buy one five months before one breaks. So if you get what you get a Kogan one, it'll t- it'll take them two weeks to get it to you. So you get one, and then it doesn't work. Send it back. It takes two weeks for them to think about it. What are you going to do for clean clothes? Stand out in the rain. Stand under the hose. <laughs> those um those uh, Kogan uh, products normally nine times out of ten they're normally rebranded. So if you're careful in looking at the specifications of the item, you find that uh, with with the specs you'll be able to tell whether the um, the product is good or not, really. So you, I, I urge everyone if you're going to get something from Kogan, just double check because they do sell a lot of stuff that's not real good, but they do sell some stuff that is good, and it's just a matter of just sipping through all the different things that they have, and you'll find that. Um, if you look at some of the specs, some of them are very closely like some some TVs might even be like Samsung, but just rebranded to Com- to Kogan. So yeah, it's right. just a matter of um, going through all the specifications, asking them questions. Mm. Uh, I, I, I've done that in the past. I've asked them questions, and they get back to you normally within twenty four to forty eight hours. I, I actually bought my first phone, uh, and I'm still using it via Kogan. I bought the LG G three, and I had. Uh, pretty good support with them. They um, there was a problem with the calendar. Oh yeah, uh, something or other with the calendar. I can't remember now exactly what was wrong. It's just the dates wouldn't match up properly for some reason. Um, so therefore, they they tried to to fix it up for me. And um, at the end of the day, it was just a a, a system update. Right. I agree. Right. Nice. Yeah, but like really, if you're going to go through Kogan. Um, I suggest you just look at all the specs because you'll find that some things, like you like like you said, Glenn, some things are not real good, mm. but some things like the, the 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 phones and things like that, they're normally okay. You just yeah. got to look through the specs to make sure they're not selling you any um, clones or any dodgy stuff. Yeah, I think. Look, the thing that has just annoyed me this time is just just the waiting. You know, like it's just the waiting. So yeah, the waiting is normally a a, a standard thing when you're mm. buying things from overseas, unfortunately. Yes. Um, if you want to, you know, pay, you know, a few hundred dollars more, you'll find that you can go to the shop here and get it straight away. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you do get a reasonable, reasonably cheaper. Now, I saw uh, in the background there, Jay, your little Google Mini. So, you know, I got one, and I was just going to tell everyone that I, I told it to play the Aussie Tech Heads podcast, and she knew all about it, and she played the latest one. So, how good is she? 
Yeah, how good is that? Eh? I, I heard, I saw that. Um, yeah, I got mine on mute at the moment for the obvious reasons. I got my Amazon on mute at the moment as well for obvious reasons. Right? Is that? A, can you? That's a voice command to to mute it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, all right, nice. I tell it, I tell it when it's playing music or something, or it goes on about something or other. I just say, I tell it to shut its face, and it just shuts up <laughs> straight away. That's funny. The kids love it. The kids are telling it to shut. I think one of the kids come and said, "Shut your hole" or something. <laughs> I, I, t- I tell you what, you want to do a little um, demo. Um, I just want to show you something with these two, right? Yeah. They'll give you totally different answers. All right. By the way, the mic's up. The mic's back on. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask them, who is the captain of the Socceroos? Right. All right, and you watch, you'll get different answers. Okay. Hey, Google. Who is the captain of the Socceroos? Australia's captain is Mile Jedinak. Hey, Alexa. Who is the captain of the Socceroos? Right. Lucas Neal. And who, who who is Lucas Neal? Lucas Neal was a captain on the last World Cup. Actually, the World Cup before that. Oh, she's living in the past. <laughs> Lucas Neal has gone into hide about um, into um, into hiding. Lucas Neal um, was uh, tragically uh, cut from the Socceroos uh, when uh, the um, the last uh, coach came into effect. Oh, right. But the funny thing is, right? I've tried this about two weeks ago. The funny thing, thing is, Amazon still thinks it's Lucas Neal. Yeah, yeah, that's not. I don't know where it gets its information. It must obviously not from the same source. Because I think uh, Google gets most of the, a lot of stuff from Wikipedia, doesn't it? So, yeah, I just turn those things back off. Yeah, because I know uh, with with mine, like you've got to be pretty specific, you know. Like, uh, so if you want to play the mic's off. Like I don't know. Say for example, the Doctor Who theme tune, right? So I okay, get you play say. Uh, uh, Google play the Doctor Who theme tune and it'll play like say the current series theme tune uh, but you've got to be like say if I said play the Doctor Who original theme tune or something like that then it'll play the original one but yeah sometimes you've got to be specific um, but it, it's pretty good I don't mind I'm going to try and expand what I do with it make it more useful my wife hates it but <laughs> I can I can talk to it from down here in the office it's great once I turn the once I tell it to play something it can't hear me to turn itself back off though Anyway, that's life. Uh, yeah, cool. All right. Uh, Jordan, what have you... Did you get any stories this week or are you just flapping in the breeze? Oh, no. Breeze. All week over this silly Facebook Live thing. I'm so, I'm so disappointed with it. That's all so right. I'm, I'm really apologising to everybody out there listening. Yeah. Um, I might have a couple of a couple of stories. I've just kind of... You know, when you just rush in to get stories, you don't get a chance to really read through and find anything really good. Yeah, so, well... You, you just kind of get whatever you find. Well, I can go with a, I can go with one, and you can jump in on that if you like. Yeah, go um, with that one, and I'll see if I can browse through mine and have another squeeze. All right, got a, a couple of Microsoft stories this week. The first one is Microsoft is giving Office a three uh, Office three sixty five a facelift. Apparently, uh, so it's giving it a facelift with user experiences changes to, uh, to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook. Uh, and this is all set to happen in the coming months. The updates will be exclusive to Office.com uh, and Office 365 versions. Uh, the first change is a simplified ribbon. Oh, I'd remember when the ribbon first came out. Oh, God. People just got went crazy, didn't they? Going, oh, we're not going to be able to find fonts anymore and all this sort of stuff. But I think we're pretty used to it by now. The web version of Word, which uh, Jordan introduced us to not too long ago, will be the first application to receive the new update, uh, followed by Outlook for Windows, uh, for select Windows Insider users. So Microsoft is also making aesthetic changes to 365, including new colors and icons, Woo-hoo! Uh, which are built as scalable graphics to adjust the different screenshots. And look, here is a little, little screenshot of sort of one. Wet your appetite a bit there. If you're on the video, you can have a look. Looks pretty much the same to me. <laughs> but uh, is that something that you, being the Microsoft person, Jordan, you are uh, excited about those? Your little tingle in your toes? Oh, he's gone off again. No, sorry. I, I oh. muted it while the phone was ringing before. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Everything's everything's happening tonight. 
Um, no, there's been a, an update coming to that for a while, but I've been too scared to uh, turn it on because it says beta up there at the, the top corner all the time. So. Oh, come on. You know, Google's in beta, Gmail's in beta for 14 years. <laughs> yeah. I, must right. go, I must go and switch it on. If you reckon it's, it's worth another look, I'll have another look. Well, anything in the cloud, you can always come back from, can't you? Yeah, so. pretty much. Yeah, but look, uh, that's a, that was a good tip you had the other week. I had no idea you could use Word, Excel, and all that for free if you use it in the cloud, just straight off the internet. That's, yeah, well, that's as long good. as you got your files saved in Dropbox. Yeah. Sorry, Dropbox, not Dropbox, OneDrive. Yeah, OneDrive, sorry. yes, the yes. Microsoft one. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you, I think you can save them to your computer, but you can't edit them right outside, outside of Dropbox. Uh, oh. I don't think. I'm not sure. Yeah, right. So, don't hold me to that, I'm so, guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's all right. Yep. So, I, well, as you know, I'm uh, getting more and more into the the Google verse. Yeah. Um, oh, I tell you, look that. When you want to have a look, I looked into you know how Google's got their their G Suite and so forth. You know, like, and you've got the the Google Drive. Yeah. So you sign up for Google Drive. What you get one terabyte, and it, yep. that'll give you, and that's for like twelve dollars a month for one terabyte. But yep. if you want to go the whole hog and get real fancy and, and, you know, stick your chest out and go around town saying you're part of G Suite, well, you can sign up for G Suite. I think for $10 a month, you get your terabyte still in the Google Drive and you also get all the other features like your, you know, your domain emails and all that sort of stuff. The, the whole G Suite for 10 bucks a month. So... Mm. Yeah, I'm uh, really looking into that because because uh, I do the backups. Say even from the uh, the servers, I push them all over to the AWS, and uh, that's costing me just for a terabyte. Cost me about twenty bucks a month. Yeah. So I'm thinking about trying to investigate if if I can, you know, get some backups uh, routing over to the Google Drive. If I can well, do that. Well, you should do that, and then you can you can come back and share that information with us, like I've just done this week with this team viewer thing. <laughs> yes. I'd be interested to know. I, I want some external backup stuff. Oh, well, look at yeah, look at the Google Drive. That's going to be the best value. That that is definitely the best value for money. You can get the Google Drive Sync program. It sits in you know it's down in your desktop, so it'll every time you make a change to a file well, up it goes and yeah. the, and your files don't have to don't have to live under the google drive directory you, i've got uh say with photos they're on my free nas uh you know just under a map drive of p uh i can i just set the sync thing and say look there's p drive over there go your hardest and every time i put a new photo on there up it goes you've so, been trying to do that for a while now you've been trying to find a syncing application that that, that will sync your network drives yeah <clears throat> Yeah, but yes, that's it's still a different type of syncing, though. Yeah, I want to get more into like more like uh, storage syncing. Uh, photos is okay because Google's looking after them, but like say with the files, can you get, you know in Google Drive you want to be able to version, you know, like so say if you overwrote something, say say you open up a document you've been working on for two weeks, and then you go out of the room, a little kid comes in, deletes the whole document, and pushes save. And it saves back up into the cloud. How do you get that back without it? Mm. So, can is there some sort of versioning up there? I haven't looked into that yet, but I'll let you know when I do. Uh, yeah, what what do you do, Joe, for backup? Do you have a backup regime, or you just fly by the seat of your pants and uh, throw here, yeah, lay on your back and think of England? No, what I do is I have a um, Windows ten machine running. Um, yeah, I keep it centrally located in the in the house. And right. um, I also use that as a server to play um, like music and uh, see pictures and and uh, family movies and stuff like that. Right. Um, back it up on Windows 10. Um, I've got four hard drives in there. Yep. And um, it's I'm not sure whether people are aware of it or not, but Windows 10 has a dynamic thing on it where if you add an extra hard drive, it automatically adapts the overall um, space that you have on there. Right. Yes. Yeah. So That's, yes, it, it, as of the last count, I don't have all that much. I think I got about, mm, I think it's about four or five terabytes of of, of data. So you've, so I, I'm up for um for grabbing a, a maybe a, a, an eight terabyte drive or something like that and backing them all up onto that because that's what I'll do. Yeah, I'll back them up onto a, a hard drive and put that away. So it's so, in another location. Did you say that you had say the four drives? 
in a dynamic situation. So it's just a, say they're two two terabyte drives each. You just had one big eight terabyte cool. Is that what you got? Correct. Yeah, right. that's right. Yeah, and uh, Windows actually rebuilds that. Like if you set up, um, if one of your hard drives dies, um, it's a matter of just pulling that hard drive out. The rest will keep it going. Pretty much like an, uh, what do they call it? Um, NAS. An array. What do they call oh, it? yeah, the RAID. Yeah, pretty much like a RAID. But it's a different uh, protocol, a different way of doing things. Yeah, I had a set up like that and I quite enjoyed it. I quite liked it, how you pulled it all together and blah, blah, blah. But my issue was like, yeah, how do you identify? I've got that issue now with my free NAS. How do you identify the, 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 the defective drive? And then, how do you know which one it is? You know, to uh, because pull, you you, you should be able. To, uh, it hasn't happened to me yet, but from what I understand, is you should be able to go into um, the the computer and it'll tell you which drive's not working. Right. Well, I had the way when I was doing it that way, I was doing it under Windows eight point one. So I'm not sure if things have changed since then. But, um, well, you know, I don't know if everyone's ever used Windows Server. A uh, mm. long time ago when Windows Home Server was available. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Yeah, I, I used that. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Mm. I loved it. Uh, and then they um, they upgraded it to Windows um, Server 2011 or something like that. That's it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. But that was great. And um, then I heard that Windows Home Server, um, they, they took it off the market. And all the features and everything that, that was in that server uh, software got introduced into Windows 10. Right. Yeah, no, I, I like that home server. I got right into that. That was, yeah, that was doing me good. And then after that, I think I, I went into the the uh, virtual, what was it, what, was it, what they call them? It was a virtual machine, the uh, v, the Sphere, the Eskies, by who, who does all that? VMware. Yeah, that thing. And then uh, had a few issues with that. And then, yeah, I finished up with this old FreeNAS, which I might be, Jordan might be talking me into changing over to... Uh, Open Media Vault, so I'll think about that. Guy was playing with FreeNAS while you were playing with Windows Server. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've had my run on FreeNAS. Don't you worry about that. Yes. Hey, Jordan, tell me something. Um, do you reckon um, with the FreeNAS, if I asked, if I set up a different machine with FreeNAS and asked it to back up my Windows Server, so and, and use that as a backup, as a sort of like a backup, as a backup, a backup of a backup. Yeah, would that work? Yeah, you can do that. But my recommendation to anybody would be rule of thumb is is to have free copies of everything. I don't know why that live video has just popped up. It thinks I'm talking, does it? Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> rule, rule of thumb is three of everything. So you've got your master copy of your, of your files, then you have a second copy, which might be on another hard drive um, in the same vicinity of your master, if you like, or somewhere in another hard drive next to your computer. And then your third backup, if you were going to do one, I would highly recommend that it's not even on the same premises. Mm, yeah, you got, I think, I think you should be off off site. Yeah, you got to have one off site. I think. Yeah, and whether There's that no point having two at home. Yeah, and whether yeah. that be at your mum's or somewhere, or but mine's up in the in the cloud. I still use Crash Plan, which is mm. what ten bucks a month, something like that. But uh, mm. the only problem with Crash Plan is it doesn't like network drives. So I've still got the problem where, uh, so what happens is if I, I set it all up and it syncs, la, 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 beautiful across the network. If I reboot my machine, it stops syncing. I've got to uninstall it, reinstall it, and get the sync on again. Get my sync on. Something doesn't seem but, right there. sync on, man. Yeah, but yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I wrote to them and they just said, we just don't support network drives. And well, you could always use, story. what is it, uh, I always called it Scuzzy or Scuzzy or Skizzy or whatever it was. Yeah, Scuzzy. Uh, what? Scuzzy, which is which FreeNAS should support. Scuzzy what? Drives. Isn't that what they call, what they call it? SC. What's it? How do you say? Yeah, S- SC ZCI or something. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, because I know that Open Media Vault supports that. There's a plugin you can get, and but then that you can, Scuzzy's then you can, gone so out you, ten years ago. Well, Open Media Vault supports it. It's a, we must, a plug-in. I don't know how well it works. I've never used it. But we must be yeah. thinking of different things. Can you even buy SCSI drives anymore? I don't. Well, it's not called. A, I don't think it's a SCSI drive. It's probably me just jambling everything together. You know, when you take a network drive and you make it a local drive, you're not not a map drive. It's, it becomes an actual system drive of your computer. Right. Be a network drive. What do they call it? 
So you, you've do got. I, do I have to look it up while we're talking about it? You look, you look that up. You come back to us, and uh, we'll see if Joe. Uh, Joe, have you got any stories? You want to? Uh, yeah, actually, I have. What do you got? SCSI. Whoa! Hang on, hang on, okay, Joe. So hang on. Let's week, um, have a look at that. There's some um, information about uh, locked Windows 10 PCs. Uh, are, are leaking sensitive information via Cortana. Oh, no. I've only just turned her on, too. Yeah, well, the so people to speak. Um, are urged to um, patch their machines now because um, researchers from uh, McAfee have, dis- have dis- demonstrated a way to use a Microsoft personal assistant to attack locked Windows 10 computers. Oh, dear. <laughs> They yeah. can't. They can't win old Microsoft. I, I don't use Cortana anyway, but if you do, um, they reckon that they what they do is they drop a executable file, or they do it via phishing or some sort of other way of doing it, and it runs some sort of code at um, um, an admin level or a privileged user level. Mm-hmm. Um, McAfee actually advises that uh, you should turn off Cortana until you've had your system patched. Yeah, right. Well, I've only just turned the turned her on uh, because, I don't know, I just got into all this virtual assistant mode, you know, and I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll talk to me Windows machine as well. But, uh, yeah, might turn it, turn it I, back I off. did a Windows install just last week. Um, I, I changed the hard drive to a SSD drive. And I, I as I installed Windows 10, I had Cortana guiding me through it. It yes. was asking me, do you want to do this? Or would you like to do this? Or do you want to go to the end? It was actually pretty good. You didn't have to, um, you know, click onto the next screen or anything like that. It was actually pretty good. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's a there's an issue at the moment. So I suggest that our listeners um, turn it off until it's actually been patched. Mm. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I know what it's one of the uh, things that's been coming up with me the last since that last update of Windows 10 is if you've got a vast on your machine, uh, in a lot of cases, if you've got a vast on and do the latest update of Windows 10, you lose stuff. It's the weirdest thing. It's a no. It's a it's a thing, and it's it's people aren't happy. Uh, what did you What did you find out, Jordan? I was just going to say, I still recommend that you use the the Windows Defender that's built in. I have no mm-hmm. problem with it, and it works with Windows. Microsoft designed it. They work hand in hand. There's no confusion amongst other virus scanners. But I mean, we know how much. You know, McAfee and Norton and all these virus companies have been hating on Microsoft, haven't they? Because they've come out with their own. Yeah. So I, you never know what's kind of how exaggerated some of these stories are, really, too. You know? I, 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 just, I don't have an AV on at the moment. I've just got the malware bytes, which I suppose is an AV if you want malware to. Malware bytes is great. Yeah. So I, yeah, my first... I use malware bytes as well. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So I've just got the Defender. Uh, at the Windows stocky standard, and the malware bytes works good That's for me. What I've got. Now, what did you find out about SCSI? I looked. I, I didn't read into it, but I just wanted to get the right, the right spelling. S C S I. Is that what we're talking about? SCSI. I, people pronounce it that way. Yeah. Small computer system interface is a set of standard or physically connecting and transferring data between computers. Yeah. So material attached, USB attached, parallel attached. Yes. Yeah. SCSI drives. Without going to into too much but open media vault has a plug-in for it and i know that when you connect it it becomes a drive so it's like mapping a network drive but you're actually mapping an scs whatever drive scs i drive yeah and then, and then you can but you wouldn't have a, a scuzzy drive these days i don't think you'd eat, the computers wouldn't even you wouldn't even be able to plug one in Maybe it's not called that. Maybe I should just maybe I should search that SCSI with Open Media. <laughs> okay. Don't don't um don't SCSI, uh, corporate open. servers still use um SCSI drives? Oh, they may well do. A lot of servers and stuff use them because you can you can run you know like you can have your websites and everything all running off off a off a one of these drives, and then if one server crashes, the other one just picks up and uses the same drive. Yeah, that's right. And the other thing is uh, these SCSI drives are also super fast. They're much faster than a standard drive. Mm. I don't know if they'd be faster than an SSD drive, but they're much faster than a standard drive. Yeah, that's the one. SC, SCSI, there's no MediaVault plug-in for it. Yeah, they must be more higher end then. Because I know, like, I don't think... You're not going to plug one into your... I think it's a good drive. I think it's just you create... I thought you just created a shared folder and you share it as a, as a 
as an SCS, I, I can't even get it. Right, that. like a RAM drive or something. Yeah, it's like a LAN drive, but it's a ra- SCI RAM. drive and yeah. it gets, you, you connect it over a network mm. um, and then you use it as a drive. That's kind of how I understood it, unless I'm mistaken. Okay. If there's anybody out there on Facebook that can understand what I'm saying, <laughs> amongst all the audio. How is Facebook post, going? Post, post back and tell us that we're wrong or right about SCSI drives. Is the audio still going out all right on the Facebook? You still got... We got, I can hear it going on Joe's. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> no, I think that's just Joe's coming back through the things. Yeah. Has but, that fixed it, that little thing that I did? Or uh, still coming through? You really need headphones. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that it's after. It's like talking to someone. You know, what about that? Is that better now? Uh, we'll have to keep Is going. On? Yeah, haven't heard it in the last... I'll tell you if it comes back. It's sort of... Yeah, haven't heard it. That, yeah, that could be that could be right. Um, okay, but I can't it, hear you now, so I've got to turn it up just a bit, though. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we could put your... Uh, it is a bit better now, but... Yeah, speakers. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then it's me. That's because Facebook's just... me stopped. listening. Uh, it's my speaker's feeding back through the mic then. It shouldn't work like that, eh? It, I know it does, but it shouldn't. Uh, so Apple is to block the tool that's used by law enforcement to crack iPhones. So the, the feds won't be happy with that. But anyway, they'll change the default settings in the iPhone operating system to cut off communication through the USB port when the phone has been unlocked, when the phone has not been unlocked in the past hour. So apparently that was the, the way to go, if you want to get into one. Uh, that port is how machines made... That port is how machines made by forensic companies Gray Shift and Cellbright and others connect and get around the security provisions that limit how many password guesses can be made before the device freezes. Now, Apple representatives said the change in settings will protect customers in countries where the law enforcement seizes and tries to crack phones with fewer legal restrictions than under the US law. I think that's just a bit of a, yeah, you know, yeah lip service but they've also come out with a statement and said we have the greatest respect for law enforcement and we don't design our security improvements to frustrate their efforts to do their job uh, with the new settings with the new settings police or hackers will typically typically have an hour or less to get a phone to a cracking machine in practical terms that could cut access by as much as 90 percent uh security researchers estimate well if that's the case and that's going to be a big thing well geez the coppers can just have have one in their utility belt, in their bat belt, or whatever, you know, so they cut the time right down. But, I mean, I don't know. I think if, if the law enforcement says, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a tight rope, it's a thin rope to, to walk, isn't it, really? I don't know which way to go on that one. Should, the, should law be able to crack into your iPhone, or should it be, you know, like, whatever you put in your iPhone is like what you say in your home, should be, that's it, that goes no further. Yeah, Tricky. you should have some privacy, shouldn't you? Tricky one. But then, like, do we? Everything's listening to us all the time. Katana, she's ready to pounce. Uh, Google, he's always listening. Listening to Joe. Alexa's listening to Joe. Yeah, and now Firefox. The only one that doesn't listen to you is your wife. That's how, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's going, isn't it? Firefox yeah. is uh, coming out with a browser. Oh, they've got a browser coming that's going to be operated by voice. That was one of it, going to be one of my stories, but I won't have to go into it. But that's everything's doing it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. Look, I do like the little Google Home uh, minis. I've got the, yeah, the mini because, like, you know, like instead of saying, I don't know, so I listen to the 4KQ radio station, right? Now, if I was a, on the high iHeart radio, you now you get your, your your phone, you open it up, open the iHeart radio app, search for 4KQ, but you might have favorited if you were smart. So you push your favorite, and then you go, yep, it's playing on the phone. Then you've got to go, okay, swipe up, whatever, play to the Apple airport, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it takes time. But, you know, with the, the Google Mini, you just go, hey, uh, Thingo, just uh, play 4KQ for us. He goes, yeah, righto. No worries. The way it goes. Easy. Um, all right. All right. So the I just got Facebook looks like it might be stuttering. So we'll see how that goes. That's uh, come good. Okay, yeah, just big buffer. Microsoft, oh, here's another one for you, Jordan. Microsoft ends forum support for Windows 7 and 8.1. Uh, community forums cease to provide technical support, so you can't get no support in the forums anymore, except from other other noobs and plebs like us. There's uh, plenty around. Yeah, it cease to provide technical support, including proactive reviews, monitoring, answering or answering or answer marking of questions for Windows 7, 8.1, 8.1 RT. Oh, God, who's using 8.1 RT? Poor, poor bastards. Uh, <laughs> Windows, did you ever have that RT one, Jordan? 
No. I know. No. Uh, but I picked up a cheap one and gave it to a family member, and I kind of regret it. <laughs> I wouldn't. Windows yeah. 7 remains the most wide. Window, how's this for a start? Windows 7 remains the most widely used Microsoft operating system. How's that? I don't see why people have a problem with Windows 10. Yeah, I don't, don't have a problem with Windows 10. It works I don't fine like with it. Me. I don't like it. Yeah, I've got no problems either. I think, look, what it is, is it started with Windows 8 and people railed against the 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 whatever the tiles, the mosaics or whatever you want to call them, the tiles. Oh, the Metro. Yeah, they didn't like it. It was too confusing. Metro. And they yeah. probably Windows probably did make a boo-boo with the no start button. But like that wasn't a big deal. You just no. go into the desktop app. Like it wasn't a big deal. Uh, the other mistake they probably made was that in the with the first Windows eight, you couldn't you had to boot up into Metro or into the tiles, uh, and then later with eight point one you could boot up into the desktop app straight away, which would have been handy if it had been done like that the first time. But uh, but that's just how they wanted to do things. It seems to be I've always thought it seems to be one with with Microsoft their operating systems. It seems to be one good one, one bad one, one good one, one bad one, one well, good one. It's like you know let's go from ninety eight to me. And then to something else, and then to Vista, and then something. Else. Yeah, one, one bad one. Look, I had no real issues with Vista either, except that it was a little yeah. bit slow. I thought Vista was supposed to be one of the worst operating systems ever created by Microsoft, from what I've always. Well, I used it. It worked all right for me. Like you just need a fair, fair computer. But anyway, uh, Windows. Um, sorry, I skipped Vista. With all the bad news, I just skipped it. I just stayed on the old one, and when Windows Seven came out, jump shit. No, oh, I've had them all. I've had them all. I, I didn't have NT, of course. I didn't have any servers, but I had them from Windows 3. I think I might have even had a Windows 2 somewhere. Windows 3, 3.1, 95, then 98. Then I think it was ME, then 2000. There were two. There was ME and 2000. I think 2000 is more the business one. Uh, and then uh, then whatever came after that. But anyway, Microsoft Windows 7, 43.8%, is ahead of Windows 10 at 31.3% of uh, computer share because of businesses who won't upgrade yeah more than likely mm. uh the windows 8.1 is still at 5.8 percent which is still behind xp so xp there's still a few xps out there yeah still yeah uh mainstream support for windows 7 ended in january 2015 but received extended support till 2020 8.1 due to receive extended support till 23 uh, and mainstream support will end, oh, ended January this year. Other Microsoft products that no longer are supported in the community forums include Security Essentials, Bad Luck Jordan, Internet Explorer 10, no great loss, Office 2010, oh well, Office 2013, hmm. Surface Pro, who cares, Surface Pro 2, Eric, is that one of yours? Uh, Surface RT, uh, Surface 2, and the Microsoft Band and the Zune. There you go. I've only got one machine running Windows XP, and that's my jukebox. Right. <laughs> I haven't got anything running XP. I got rid yeah, of it. I mean, it works fine. It's a low, low, uh, low spec machine, so yeah, that's fine. I still use XP in one virtual machine just for one piece of old software. I refuse to go and upgrade. <laughs> yeah, fair enough too. I've got a virtual Windows Seven for a bit of old software. Yeah, which was my ob. Yeah, so they. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. My, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's I'm your to you too. I'm yeah. not going to pay that silly amount of money and go online and have it all done for no. someone like me. I went to QuickBooks online. That was a bit cheaper. My accountant hates it. He says, "Why did you upgrade?" I'm like, "I'm not paying a monthly subscription for my small amount of use." Come in the neck up and just take your money and do his job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, did you have any more stories, Joe? You got anything else to talk about? Um, not. Not really a stories, but I just wanted to talk about EDU tech that I went last week. Oh, yes. What is that? Yeah, education technology. There's a, an exhibition that happened last week, the International Congress of um, Education and Technology. Nice. Yeah, it was more of a technology on Google was there, Microsoft was there, um, all the uh, big companies were there. Um, the, the latest focus is on educating uh, kids um, in the classroom and um, all those sort of things that are happening um, in the future. The big thing I noticed was that uh, virtual classrooms and vir you know, sharing of files with, with, um, with each other. Mm. Uh, I did a live demo with uh, the Google one. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and that one there had like a document, like a Word document. And as you were looking at it, you could see the teacher adding information into the document. You could see the um, the, uh, the the rest of the class adding their own information. The teacher can actually go ahead and specify specific uh, targets and things for you to do. And it could be something different to somebody else as well. I was just going to ask that. Yeah, if it, if it was just across the board, like a, a share, a sync sort of shared document, or they can actually do different things to different people. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, they can do different things. I mean, the different people have different um, learning um, criteria, different ways of the day, different levels of learning. And um, the teacher can specify specifically which one um, has uh, what part and how, how fast they move along the, the, the learning curve. Yeah, right. That sounds like it was pretty good. Was that was that a freebie to get into? Yeah, that was a freebie. It was actually a three day event, and I was away for the first two days, and I got, I just caught the last day. Right. I would have loved to have gone to the whole three days because um, I didn't get a chance to listen to any of the um, the seminars or any of the talks or the things that they did there. I just quickly, brisk, you know, walked through and and did a um, um, a, a few chats with a few people there made some contacts mm. I'll, I'll do a, a little um a little youtube as well on that one i'll do a uh All a right. little summary yeah nice youtube i'll share it uh to well obviously your page and uh to the our page too if you can the aussie tech Ed page yeah, yeah yeah i'll do that yeah yeah so speaking of your page what is your page where do we find your page it's uh facebook.com forward slash uh joe the gadget man Nice, good stuff. So, uh, look for those of you who wanted to, to know, it was a pretty important event by the look of it. Uh, we had the, some Senator Simon Birmingham and Honourable Rob Stokes, who was the New South Wales Minister for Education, and and a shout out for Eric, which I thought he would have gone. Uh, Julia Gillard was there as speak, one of the speakers. So, Eric, you missed out. Bad luck. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know if you guys remember a few weeks back, um, and when I went to um, CBIT, well, no, actually it was the one before that, the Amazon one. Yes, they had that big, uh, big screen that I was playing with. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a big thing in the classroom today. They um, they um, they use that, and they um, also use what's called like a whiteboard, like the old paper whiteboard. Yeah, they have a new version of that. Samsung has a new version of that. Um, I'll, I'll put more info up on my website if anyone's interested. So is that like like a newer version than say? Uh, you write on the whiteboard, then you can just print it out. Is that is yeah? That that's right. Exactly further? right. So, but but you know you know how you know how you normally in the classroom they have these interactive TVs where people connect their laptops and so forth, and you can see in the corner a bit of a video, and and mm. the teacher can write on the wall and everything. But then you'll always always find that some teachers also have a white whiteboard or something like that, separately to to the rest of the class. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's what Samsung is focusing on. They're focusing on that particular board and different mm-hmm. ways to use it. I wonder. I wonder if that they're somehow running with Android on that sort of stuff. Um, be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? Samsung. I'm not sure. I don't think it runs. And I'm not sure if it runs. I think it's a proprietary system that they're running on that one. Yeah, it probably would be. I guess like. Yeah, because I know, like you know, in the old days, I suppose even there, like Apple always used to be the you know the thing about education. Like schools had to have the Apple computers and all that. But geez, it looks like Samsung's jumped on board and things things are things are changing. Um, look, I've got a another story here, just a quickie. It's Yahoo Messenger is being shut down next month. So not that probably anyone cares because no one's on it. But if you know any friends that are on it, well, you won't be able to talk to them. Uh, after next month, one of the web's first messaging tools is being shut down next month, be discontinued on July 17. And also just a, another little quickie is Instagram may soon be allowing hour-long video uploads. So I'm trying to get into Instagram, trying to use it a bit more. Not have much luck, but trying. Uh, Instagram already supports hour-long live streams, but videos you post to your profile can only be up to one minute long and story clips are capped at 15 seconds. Instagram has been busy, including uh, rolling out new features, apparently, including a video chat, new ways to poll your friends, a whoopee do, and the ability to mute posts. The long-awaited mute feature lets you hide posts from certain people that I'm following them. I guess the poll thing, I, I probably dismissed that too quickly, but the poll your friends, or maybe if you've got a business, you could poll your customers, so that could be good. Um, uh, and I think, has anyone else got anything to talk about? I've got one last story before 
got one here. Wrap up? Yeah. I've got one that I was I found earlier today and then I lost it and found it again. Uh, brace yourself uh, for laptops with 128 GB of RAM because they're coming. Today, Lenovo announced its ThinkPad P5 II, um, along with its massive amount of memory, also features up to 6 terabyte of storage and up to 4K of 15-point inch. 6 terabytes? Mm. An 8th Gen Intel Hexicore processor and an NVIDIA Quadro P3 200 graphics card. All these numbers in there just to trip me up. Uh, the ThinkPad is also also includes two Thunderbolt th- uh, 3 ports, HDMI 2.0 and mini display port, three USB Type A ports, a headphone jack, that's unusual, and an Ethernet port. That's it. A- the company hasn't announced yet the pricing, but it's likely to uh, likely going to compete with Dell's uh, new 128 compatible workstations laptop. Hasn't Thunderbolt bit the dust as well? Or is I, th- I thought it had, but hmm. maybe Apple's no longer doing it. But what what Apple doesn't like, everyone else seems to pick up. But I thought dusty... laptops already had 128 gigs of RAM in them too. But maybe I'm oh, not RAM, not RAM. That's Would... a hell of a lot of RAM. Yeah, they, they've got 128 gig hard drives. I don't know, but that's a lot of RAM. Though. So 128 gig of RAM and six terabytes of, of hard drive space. That's massive. And a, four, and a 4K 15 inch screen. <laughs> yeah, that's massive. Yeah, like I know there's all these larger, you know, hard drives coming out. As Joe was saying just before, he wants to get eight terabyte one. How much is out of, out of uh, uh, curiosity? How, yeah, how much exactly. is? Do you know how much one of those is, Joe? No, I haven't had a look to be honest. Well, I'm going to tell you because I'm going to look it up because I'm interested. Uh, parts. Let's have a look at our old favourite MSY. Hang on, parts price list. Oh, I can't show you because it's open in a new window. Oh, well, oh, you just have to trust me. I'll look up one for you. Here we go. I'll bring one up in a few seconds. Uh, where are we? It's opened up in the edge window. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're living on the edge. So, Sada. Where are we? SATA internal hard drives. Here we go. Eight. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> a six terabyte Seagate three and a half inch Barracuda Pro 7200 RPM. Six terabyte 330. Eight terabytes 475. And 10 terabytes 518. Yeah, that's what I've got in front of me. Around the same. 330 for a Seagate. Yeah, dollars. Now, our oh, Western Digital Blue, they are a little bit cheaper. Six terabyte, two sixty-five against the Seagate three thirty. I still believe in the uh, the saying not to have all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, but if you're going to back up, as long as you back up. But if you're going to have everything on one drive and it fails and you haven't got a backup. Hmm. I don't, pretty much screwed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, because my NASA's got a few critical errors trying to figure out what drive's failing, uh, I've, uh, yeah, I just did my, you know, backup onto different case, drives just the other day. You've got to, you just got to do it. Yeah. There's just no room for it. Although my data's also up in the cloud, I just can't yeah. be bothered downloading it all if the, if the worst happens. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, Okay, this is my last little bit for this week, and this was sent in from Milo. Hi, Milo. I know he's what, <laughs> watching watching on the uh, the Facebook Live. Hopefully, someone just said what happened to the Brady Bunch. <laughs> oh, the the Brady Punches uh, no more. Uh, I don't know even how how you guys did that. That's too too much for me. <laughs> that was just a different uh, platform. It wasn't Zoom. It was um. Oh, that uh, it was another whole different platform. Maybe that's what the issues were. Maybe it's because it was a different platform. Maybe who knows? Uh, but yeah, this is all about Fortnite. Now I can ask you guys like in a minute about Fortnite. Oh. But uh, yeah, so a girl nine, so nine year old girl, she wets herself instead of going to the toilet while playing Fortnite. Now, I do that. <laughs> Fortnite is the latest fixation for gamers with more than 40 million people across the world downloading it since it launched last year a little 9 year old girl in the UK is so gripped with the game she wet herself instead of putting down the controller to go to the toilet she is it now in therapy uh, for the addiction after she became withdrawn agitated and disturbed from playing really? up to 10 hours a day sometimes playing until dawn uh, wetting herself so she didn't have to leave the screen her mum yeah, blah, blah, blah. There's also a boy, 11, in Sydney uh, that said he could spend two and a half hours a day playing with his friends despite being restricted to 30 minutes during the week. Uh, he said, I would wake up like 5 a.m., get dressed, 
and I'll play for two hours before school. Then I'll go to bed, play for another 30 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know about uh, good old Fortnite. Uh, the, my kids are asking if they can get it. They want to actually buy a whole Xbox One just to buy the, the Fortnite. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I've been even... A, now, after looking yeah. into it, it's getting a bit bit crazy. I'm, think, I'm thinking the same thing. My boy's been nagging me for Fortnite as well. And... Um... Yeah, I think the the other thing to think about is that although it's a cartoony style, you know, world and display, uh, each person in that world is actually like a real person behind it in the real world. So you're right. you're in the real world as an avatar, obviously, but you know, but you still got to go and kill other people that look like people, and that's another issue. I think I've just yeah. got to. And it, it doesn't Minecraft join like that though. Um, over worlds, or is that only locally on your local network? You can go over worlds, and yes, but I think Minecraft might be a bit different because you're sort of just a a little block of blocks. You know, you're not. Yeah. But in Fortnite, you actually look like. I'll, I'll see if I can get a. And let me just type it in. I was reading an article while we were going through drive through actually. <laughs> oh. Don't crash. About it, about about Fortnite, and my boy was like, "Oh, this is Fortnite, Dad. You got to get it. You got to get it." And I still haven't said yes. But a hundred, it's reached 120 million game players online. Yeah, right. Apparently, it's enormous, and um, everybody's saying I've got to get on it. And I said to him, "Well, maybe I should get on it." <laughs> well, yeah, first maybe I should get on first and have a look at it and play it myself and see if uh, see if it's appropriate. Yeah, I, oh, I don't know why I can't show you the whole of that. Hang on, why, why, did, why, did, why can't I mute that? I, hang on, hang on. There we go. Stupid thing wouldn't mute. Now, I don't know if I can show you a better picture of this. I don't know why I can't scroll. But anyway, that's just that's just life. That's all I can show you. But anyway, you can see those avatars there walking the street. So they're pretty lifelike, well, I guess lifelike. And um, that's what you've got to go kill. So, I don't know. Up to you, I guess. But yeah, I'm thinking about it. Uh, and Joe, you got one more? Yeah, I got one more. Um, in light of the 2018 FIFA World Cup, um, FIFA has uh, introduced three types of technologies um, in the system. Um, goal line technology, um, where there's 14 high-speed cameras send a signal to a uh, within one second to a referee's watch. Mm. Um, so just to let him know whether the ball has actually crossed the line or not. Um, there's various different um, videos on YouTube. If you just do a search for Godline technology, you'll see how that works. Yeah. So very interesting to see um, within a few seconds, as soon as the ball goes over the line, it sends a signal to the watch. The referee looks at the watch right. and calls the goal. Right, right. Yeah, is, the is, second of the... Um, I was just going to say, just before we go on to that second one, is that like an, a problem within the in soccer, is it? Like the ball... Is that like might go over the line, but they don't know it's gone over the line? Well, see, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people find that um, the the ball has to go completely over the line. It's not like in uh, a little bit over the line or on the line. The ball has has to completely cross the line with a a hairline gap if you want to. But that's the rule that when the ball fully goes past the line, that's when it's counted as a goal. Right. Now, in the past, there's been people who have gotten to the ball behind the line, kicked it out. The goalkeeper saved it, anything, something like that. And the referee's not in a position to be able to see that. And sometimes the cameras, um, well, this is part of video assistant referees as well. Um, the uh, the video assistant referee will then be able to see that, where he, whereas before in the past, the referees never had that information. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, that's good. That's good. They might be able to use it for other sports, like, what do you think, like tennis or something like that as well? Would it be suitable for that? Well, they have a, something similar when they play tennis, you know, when they do the serves, whether the ball's going in or out or yes. back lines and, you know, um, all the different serves. Mm. I know they've got the, that video replay, haven't they, where the ball comes and they go, oh, yes. But, yeah, but uh, a, a, a judgment in a second is pretty good. That's good. They need to speed up the NRL a bit too, uh, just quietly. Yeah, so what was your second one, Joe? It's a video assistant referees, uh, commonly known as VAR, the ref. Right, right. Yeah, what that does is it um, it's used to um, clear you know obvious errors. Like sometimes an offside rule um, can be a bit unclear 
um, whether the, the player was onside or offside. Mm. Um, I've seen it happen in the past. A few referees will then, um, if the goal is scored, the referee will then uh, hold the game for a moment, run over to the sideline, um, look at like what appears to be like a, a little box with a monitor in it. Um, and then based on that, he will make a decision right then and there. There's none of this um, waiting for an answer thing that they do in rugby league. It's right then and there. He, he thinks something's not right. He'll, he'll run over to the to the uh, VAR and mm. uh, look at it and yeah. he'll make a call right then and there, yeah, which I, okay. I reckon is a great idea. I mean, mm. there's been grand grand finals and world cups and, and, and uh, competitions won and lost based on decisions like that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I know. Uh, I, I guess like, you know, some people say that, you know, the vi- once that in the sports have introduced the video refs, uh, it has drawn out the games and maybe it's just not as good, but I think if you can get fast decisions and uh, decisions that, you know, are still a bit iffy, even though they're slowed down to frame by frame, I think you've got to get serious. And if you're going to have to slow it frame by frame, get the tape measure out to see if there's a millimetre between a finger and the ball on a, on a stopped frame, well, give it a give it the go-ahead. You know, like, it just has to, it just has to, yeah, I think, has to happen. I think where FIFA is, I think that everyone doesn't like the idea of slowing down the game, obviously. But... Because of the um, the errors and the, the I mean, the World Cup can be won or lost on based on a decision. Was mm. the guy offside? Wasn't he offside? Yeah. Um, yeah. So therefore, the referee, to be sure, will then go along, run to the side of the line. He'll have a look, and no other no other involvement. Just him and him and that machine. Yeah. Have a look at it. Yep. Yeah. That was offside. Great. Mm. No goal. Or no, that was not offside. The goal counts. So you'd have to uh, forgive my ignorance here, Joe. But so there's only one ref. There's no sideline referees in soccer. Yeah, there is. There's sideline referees, and that's what that's another thing that they've um, they've told the referees on the sideline in the FIFA World Cup is and that is that if it's not a you know when it's a when it comes to offsides or um, any particular um, fouls, unless it's a clear foul or clear uh, offside, they're 100 percent sure. To not not call it, mm. let the referee call it, yeah, and right. at the same, that's again that will be also um, if the referee can see it, then fine. If he thinks that he needs to go and look at the VAR, well then he'll go and do that. Yeah, okay, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, I suppose at the end of the day, everyone just wants the correct decision, don't they? But uh, yeah, so that's good. All right, any more, Jordan? Or you? Jason Milo you out? Ramsey said he thought there was a uh, an age restriction on Fortnite, and I'll just say, yeah, there w- was. It's, it's twelve plus. Ah. So that nine year old girl and my my ten eleven year old boy. Mm. It should you be know, on they're, it. They're pretty good with their their age restrictions generally. You should stick to them, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Well, like because I said, like the kids have got probably a couple of hundred bucks between them, and they said they wanted to buy the my, uh, the Xbox One. And then the Fortnite said, "So you guys seriously, what the Xbox One's gonna, or Xbox S or something, it's a second hand or something, it's gonna cost them two fifty. I said, "Then you're gonna have another, you know, ninety dollars for the game." I said, "Are you guys serious? You want to spend three hundred and something dollars just on one game? Mm-hmm. And while you probably won't be able to play it all that often anyway, because there's homework, hello, yeah, and stuff like that." So just uh, call me, just call me Milo. Milo, Milo, Milo. <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, good stuff. So it looks like the the Facebook feed Milo's still there. So it must be it must have been all right. So we'll we'll interrogate Milo after the show to see how the the syncing issues were on the Facebook. But I'm pretty sure, and fingers crossed, that everything uh, went okay. <laughs> Otherwise, so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes on the YouTube, and I'm pretty sure the audio will be good this week. So sorry about last week, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes these things happen. And, yeah, look, um, if uh, if the Facebook audio doesn't turn out that great there will be a live you're still um you're still going to upload the uh, recording anyway aren't you in all the usual places oh yeah 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 that's right okay cool thanks uh joe thanks for coming in are you off to any any anywhere this week no there's no seminars happening this week oh well, that's a shame that's a shame you oh, actually yes there is um I'm, i'll be going maybe not next week or the week after i'll be going to a splunk presentation oh you'll have to explain that what's What's that? No, it's not what you think it is. It's a Splunk. It's a database type thing. Well, I had no idea what it was. It sounded weird, though. 
<laughs> all right, a database thing. All right. Well, uh, when's that on? Uh, I believe it's the 19th or the 20th at um, the ICC. I have to check on that. But right. uh, I was invited to go to attend uh, a one-day seminar and discussion on how Splunk works. S P L U N K. All right. Let's just before we go, let me have a. Let, let... My, son likes to, my son likes to make up words to replace rude words. So that when you take when you're talking to someone rudely, you can say it without being recognised as saying something rude. I'll have to give him that one. <laughs> All right, look, I I, can use it somewhere. Here's the here's the, the the banner on the front page. I don't even understand probably four of the five words that are in it. But the <laughs> UNLV boosts achievement with machine data analytics, increases ROI, reusing data across IT ops, learning analytics, and support. That sounds All terribly right. enthralling. Um, but oh yeah, real time. Splunk gives you the real time answers you need to meet customer expectations. Uh, machine data. Use Splunk to connect your machine data and gain insights into opportunities. Splunk scales to meet modern data needs and leverage artificial intelligence powered by machine learning for actionable and predictive insights. Any questions on Splunk? Any question? Any data? One Splunk. There you go. I see. I know, funny name, but it's a it's a good program. I've had a bit of a look at it, um, but I'm actually spending the whole day seeing um, what it what it does, uh, how it does it, and what benefits businesses have from it. Nice, nice. Trusted by eighty nine of the Fortune one hundred, Zillow, Coke, AAA, Hyatt. Who else? But yeah, looks good. Oh, have fun there, Joe. Looks looks like it's going to be uh, quite intense. But there, yeah, let's hope you. Have fun. Adobe, a, a Maya, and a plan, Autodesk, Altassian. Yeah, nice. Cool. All right. Lovely. All right, let's get out of here. It's uh, well over closing time. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us again. What was that? Did you hear that? What was <laughs> that? <amazing. laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going, closing time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can't stay here. All right, so uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Don't forget the Facebook, the YouTube. You get the Joe on his Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Joe the Gadget Man. Is that right? Something yeah. like that. Uh, you can email him. I'll well, just email Joe at aussietechheads.com.au. That'll do. Or, and, uh, or if you remember his proper one, you can email him there. Glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. Jordan at aussietechheads.com.au. Might change Jordan. <laughs> I'll change Jordan's uh, email address to flash at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's your name from now on. You'll be Flash. 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 Oh, boy, love that because it's his, it's his all-time favourite superhero. Flash yeah. Jordan. All right. He's, if I tell him I'm Flash, yeah. <laughs> he's going to think that's, that's the best ever. Well, that's who you are from now on. All right. I'll accept it. <laughs> okay, Flash. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. We'll see you next week, hopefully, if you if you survive Splunk. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> that could be superhero name. All right. Thanks, everyone, for downloading and watching wherever you may be. Uh, it's been a pleasure. So look after yourselves. Glad that New South Wales won last State of Origin. Let's hope we can do it again this week and take the – well, not whenever it is. Take the series the next game. All right. Till next week. Bye for now. Go the Sharks. Go the Sharks.